Is everybody ready? Yes. Okay. All right. So welcome to Unchained Disciples. We are on our series of Seeking Wholeness. Tonight we are looking at forgiving your father and your mother. This is the third lesson on forgiving your father and mother. So we're going to review what we went over the first two times and also have some new content. And we'll be going through an exercise at the end. We'll be going through an exercise at the end where we'll be forgiving our fathers and mothers. I'll start off by reading Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 through 3. And welcome to those watching online on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Uh, it's also a Zoom class going on. So Ephesians 6, 2 to 3. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may turn out well for you and that you may live long on the earth. All right. So how do we honor parents that weren't deserving of honor? How can we honor parents? parents that weren't deserving of honor. Any thoughts on that? So it commands us to honor our parents. Our days will be long. You know, it's not a formula, but often say, how, so how do we honor parents that didn't deserve honor? I was fortunate enough to have two parents that they weren't perfect, but they never let me down. And so mm. that question, I, I took them for granted as I was growing up. But as I became, as a, as a, as a, a grown man, I look back and I see other grown men, how they had one problem or another here or there. And when I realized that my parents were walking the, the glory path and they were the straight and narrow and leading me the same way, and it, um, it just made me feel uh, a lot better that, that, that I didn't have that distraction. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it's a lot. Looking back, that's what uh, John was actually mentioning before that, you know, it, once you get older, you look back and realize oh, it was a lot tougher than, you know, just giving me all the ice cream. Yeah, I, I, didn't, realize, I didn't right, realize how fortunate I was. And uh, until I look back and I said, wow, you know, because some of the stories I hear mm. and I, guys, they were survivors, but I'm saying, wow, I didn't have to go through that. You know, that's a blessing. And yeah. that, so that's what I feel all these times. Um, I, I could talk about my mom and dad, but trust me, they were, they were who they were supposed to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They, and they were up for the task. They didn't, they weren't a hundred, my dad was not a hundred, hundred percent, but he was 95 and that was good enough. <laughs> hey man. Yeah, I was the same. My, my parents, I didn't appreciate them until I got older, um, especially my dad. I'll share a, uh, a little Instagram story that came across my feed. It kind of speaks to that, how you honor parents that didn't deserve honor. put out a sign that says a sign that says you hurt me but I still pray for you so how we honor we honor them so we honor so we honor our parents in two ways well well we we prescribe value to the relationship so we they were our parents that was you know whether they were good or bad they were our parents and then so the position and then there's the relationship so the position they were our parents by default they were our parents and then there's the actual relationship so we need to honor the position, regardless of how the relationship was. So as, in honoring the position, we want to honor them. We want to pray for them. We want to wish them well. But we also want to honor the reality of the relationship, the reality of the relationship. So like, if, like Chris said, if they, you know, he looks back, they were 95% there. They did everything. They raised him right. You know, now when you get older, yeah, he's going to pray for them, wish them well. But based on his relationship, you know, they're owed, you know, some time and some assistance and some things of that nature. But, you know, if, if maybe your father left when you were two and he comes back when you're 40 and, you know, an alcoholic and, 
wants to move in with you, you know, you don't know he's a stranger. So the relation, the reality of the relationship is he's still a stranger. So you want to honor him with, you know, prayer, wishing him well, but the reality of the relationship also comes into play. So you're not necessarily owed to, to necessarily sacrifice your family and sacrifice your well-being in that situation, but you still, you want to honor, you know, you don't want to dishonor him, but you still, the relationship, you want to honor it as well. You want, we want to take in light of the, the actual relationship that we had with them. So as I'm trying to connect, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. I have an extreme example, Mike, that I just learned about two weeks ago. My ex-brother-in-law, um, I'm not sure what city he grew up in. Let's say it was Cleveland. Uh, his father was in the neighborhood where he grew up, mm. but his father and people told would point the man out saying, that's your father. And it was his father, but he denied being the boy's father for his entire life. Mm. Can you imagine that? Wow. The only, only father you ever have, you actually see him in the neighborhood, but so, but he didn't want to pay any child support or anything like that. So he would walk up and say, are you my father? He said, no, you know, and he would just... You know what I mean? That's one of the worst wow. things I think you can do to a young man. And this guy had to live with that his entire life. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a horrible situation, you know? And then, yeah, I wonder what his mother said in that situation, but yeah, that's. But it's hard. I, I can't imagine putting a man like that on any kind of a pedestal of respect, even though God does require it. Because I guess there are worse things, but that's psychologically, mm. you know, just so terrible. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that, yeah, that definitely damages, damage, you know, probably damaged him for much of his life unless, he, you know, did some work to yeah, I don't get think he ever it. really overcame it as a grown, grown men can cover things up. Yeah. But my sister was his wife. And so that it, it came out in their relationship mm. that, that that was something that inhibited him and his maybe ability. To, you know, you never can tell how, how that can inhibit someone. But that right. that is how he grew up with his father living like two blocks away and never acknowledging him as a son. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I know that must be tough to to deal with. Uh, let me share this video that I got. Um, came across my feed today, actually. And it's interesting. I don't go out looking for these videos. It just happened to be what comes to me. And it was on this topic. I don't know why my screen is so big. Oh, there we go. Um, for people who don't have strong relationships with their mother. I don't ever think you grow out of needing your mom. Even people who have lost their mother in terms of their deceased, that's a deep, deep pain. But it's also painful to have your mother alive and feel like you don't have her. And for you to be full grown and there's like a baby in you, there's a little girl in you that still wants to be cared for and encouraged and affirmed, uh, still needs attention. I want to affirm that that desire you have is good. You know, when we read it, especially as a parent, we say, yeah, honor your mother and father so that your days may be long upon the earth, that this is the only command given with a promise. Parents like to quote that for disobedient children. <laughs> but it is true. It's a promise with that. But I think it's also important for us, what does that look like when you're an adult? What does it look like to honor your mother um, when sometimes they haven't even lived an honorable life. So first thing I would say, in order for you to love your mom well and build a relationship with her and to honor her, is to first grieve the loss of the mother you wish you had. And in some ways, many of us have to have a homegoing celebration or we have to have a funeral in our own hearts and mind for the, the fantasy mom that I have to bury because she does not exist. And that the pressure, the standard that I hold this woman to, who is actually my mother, um, she may never get there, 
But what will it look like to have my deepest needs satisfied in God, satisfied by other women that God will bring close to me, but still thank God that this is the vessel he chose for me to come through. But I think grief, real grieving has to precede your ability to really love because sometimes we're loving a ghost and we're not loving the actual woman and who she really is. And I think grieving and, and allowing God to minister to you, to comfort you, and for you to see the resources of Mother Ring he surrounded you with will help you meet her. And actually, even though you're her child, you'll be able to minister to her in a way that you didn't think you'd be available to because of your pain. So I just wonder if... All right. So sometimes we need to... Let go of the fantasy of the perfect father, the perfect mother, and accept the reality of the parent that we have and go from there. Any thoughts on that? Any thoughts on that video? I thought that was a uh, powerful statement that, yes, yeah, so, in that, uh, so that's another way of, of honoring the reality of the relationship. You know, we holding, honoring what really happened and honoring, you know, letting go of what our fantasy of what we wish we had, whatever, what other people had and accepting our actual relationship. All right. So here's the agenda for today. We're going to look at uh, that was how do you honor your parents? The introduction. Next, we're going to look at the traits of wholeness. We're going to review from the previous lessons. What is forgiving? Barriers to forgiveness. Reasons to forgive. What they did had two consequences, and you can't honor your parents unless you forgive. And then we'll cover the new topics. Not forgiving your parents impacts your current relationships. We'll look at how not forgiving impacts you today in other relationships. You're the best one suited to heal the damage, what it is that you actually have to forgive, and then we're gonna look at how to forgive, and then we're gonna go through an example of forgiving. So that's the outline for today. All right, so we'll start off with our traits of wholeness, traits of wholeness that we've been going over, that we've built over the past three years, we've been going over, we're in a series called Seeking Wholeness looking at how to be emotionally, mentally, and spiritually healthy, uh, being free from depression from the past, from ourselves, from bad thinking, from strongholds, from the enemy. Uh, we're looking at how to deal with life stresses today and also how to deal with the issues that we've had from the past. Uh, we're not just promised eternal life. We're also promised joy, peace, patience, self-control here on earth but a lot of Christians don't actually have that. So we're working towards having that. And so these are some of the traits that we're striving for. These are the traits that we've defined as goals and we're striving for them. And we've been studying through these, stepping through these. And there are number one, authenticity, honesty, kindness, not seeking external validation or approval living by values and principles, setting boundaries, taking ownership of our responsibilities, living with purpose and passion, optimism, confidence, having healthy relationships with others, not losing control of our emotions, being free from addictions, addressing conflict with truth and love, being vulnerable, not being critical or judgmental, not being jealous of others, Forgiving those who've wronged us in the past, knowing that we're worthy of receiving love, not being afraid to fail, able to manage irrational fear, worry, and anxiety, having selfless encounters with others, not manipulating others to try to control their actions or their reactions. We care about how others feel. We're patient. We don't give in to peer or social pressure. We want to be able to communicate directly we want to take responsibility for other people's, not take responsibility for other people's emotions. 
and not expect others to take responsibility for our emotions. We want to be slow to anger. We want the ability to maturely express our wants, needs, and desires. And ultimately, our goal is to be led by the Holy Spirit. So those are the traits of wholeness that we're striving for. We've been striving for them. And uh, all right, so we'll get into the lesson for today. So first, I'll review what we've covered so far with forgiveness. What is forgiving? So the Mayo Clinic defines forgiving as forgiveness means different things to different people. But in general, it involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. The act that hurt or offended you might always be with you. But working on forgiving can lessen that, that act's grip on you. It can help free you from control of the person who harmed you. Sometimes forgiveness might even lead to feelings of understanding, empathy, and compassion for the one that hurts you. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing the harm that was done. It also doesn't necessarily mean making up with the person who caused the harm. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that allows you to focus on yourself and help you go on with your life. So that's the Mayo Clinic definition of forgiveness. Uh, any comments on that? Any thoughts or comments? Okay. It seems, it seems, it seems to me, to correct me if I'm wrong, please, Brother Michael. The, the scriptures call us to a very deep type of forgiveness, right? I, I mean, from from the very line of forgive, please forgive your enemies. Mm. Of course, it's just love of your enemies, but I believe there is also a line that says forgive your enemies. Am I right here or am I... You're right. Forgive? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. And, and the enemies in those days, I, I think this was pers talked about in the context of persecution, right? The time when uh, uh, the church was was being harassed by the enemy, by, by the non-Christian, non-believers. Uh, or maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, the types of enemies we're talking about, love your enemies and forgive your enemies, is not the enemies that we have today. <laughs> yeah, today we should. make enemies just because somebody uh, told me something offensive or looked at me the wrong way. I mean, we are very sensitive nowadays. You know? We can get angry for everything. But in those days, those were real enemies, and the scripture calls us to forgive those enemies. So my, my question is, or my comment is, um, to love my enemy, it's, it's tremendously deep, mm. right? I mean, it's, it's different. Please forgive me. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's, it's different from, from not making peace with, not necessarily making peace with, the other party. I mean, the type of forgiveness that the scripture calls us to, how can we achieve, how can we develop that kind of forgiveness? Mm. That if the scripture presents it that way. So, so, the, so we're going to touch on that, forgiving your parents, but, but, but the, um, so, I mean, so it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough to, you know, the formula to come up with, but uh, forgiving, so it calls you to forgive and so, so there's part of it, you know, we're going to step through some of the reasons to forgive and some of the ways to look at it, including, including, you know, looking at how much you've been forgiving, forgiven, you know, and if we think about how much, how much injustice we've done to God and all loving God who provided for us, then in comparison to that, how, how bad did the person treat us? You know, so that's one way to look at it. But we're going to step through some things. Even in this review, we're going to step through some things like that. But uh, yeah, so we'll get to that. But it, yeah, the scripture calls us to forgive, and loving is is a is a next is another step. You know, we're supposed to love everyone. But uh, but yeah, it is definitely tough. It's definitely tough. It's not just that. And so we'll walk through some steps on how to do it. A lot, you know, a lot of times we say do this, oh, renew your mind, oh, be led by the Spirit. And it's like, whoa, you know, how, can you give me, can you give me a little more <laughs> specific instructions than that? 
It's like you you got to renew your mind. Oh, okay. Uh, it's like I, <laughs> how do I do that exactly? Let me refresh, but uh, yeah. Like you know, I was I uh, after it. after someone offends. Well, my dad talk, told me this, and I think I mentioned it in our last class. But if you're offended by someone after a reasonable time period, sorry about my dog barking. Mm. Time period of um, of complaining, you. Uh, Prevent, you, you never vocalize the incident and relive it again. You, when you feel it coming up, swelling up inside of you, don't let it come out of your mouth. After a period, not immediately, but like after a few weeks after you've been offended. And that is a kind of a, uh, an aid in helping the emotion go down. Yeah, and definitely. Out of your mouth. Yeah, definitely. And that's actually... Um one of the verses we're looking at, you know, don't lo don't let the sun go down on your anger. It's not, you know, it's not because, you know, at sunset something magical happens. It's, say it's saying that there there's this period of time when your anger becomes unforgiveness. So it's, so it's okay to be angry. So it says be angry and don't sin. We're, uh, so which is saying those are two separate, anger isn't a sin. So it's okay to be angry, but it's saying do not let the sun set on it. So it's saying there's a time period when it's not so yeah exactly what you're saying there's a time period when it becomes a, not okay anymore um so let me get, get the here's the, the uh, explanation of anger that we've covered what does it mean to forgive i mean someone? a forgiveness to forgive someone is a conscious decision to intentionally let go of the anger and resentment that you have towards someone for harm for what they did to you in the past. Just because you forgive them doesn't mean you're going to forget about it. It doesn't mean you're saying it wasn't wrong, but it's a conscious decision to let go of the anger. When you forgive someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you trust them now. It doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship is restored or that there's reconciliation. But forgiveness does mean that you're letting go of the debt. When you forgive someone, you're saying, you no longer owe me. You no longer owe me an apology. You no longer owe me an acceptance of blame. You no longer owe me seeing it from my perspective. You no longer owe me saying that you were wrong. To forgive someone is to cancel the debt. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean that you can't set boundaries. You can forgive and still set boundaries. You can forgive someone but still take yourself out of a harmful and an unsafe environment. When you forgive someone, you're giving yourself the gift of letting go of the anger and the resentment and no longer letting what this person did control you in your life. They no longer have control over your emotions. They no longer have control over your happiness today. You know, like you mentioned, it's tough to forgive you. If you think of like back in those days, they had, you know, the Roman soldiers were out trying to kill them. And Jesus, you know, told them to forgive. So it's like someone killed your brother. It's like, okay, so you eventually you need to let go of the anger and the resentment. But if they came to a farm and they killed everyone that was wearing a left shoe, then that doesn't mean when they come into your town, don't take your left shoe off. <laughs> It's like you can forgive them, but you can still take your left shoe off when they come into town. It's like it doesn't mean you trust them or that you get yourself. It's like I forgive you, but it's like I'm still gonna take my left shoe off when you come in, but in the town because because you know I'm gonna keep myself out of harm's way. So it's like I'm not angry or resentful for what you did, but it doesn't mean that it's not gonna impact my future actions in in relationship with you. But like Chris says, uh, but it does mean I'm not like complaining about it. I'm not, you know, actively uh, doing things of that nature. I'm not plotting my revenge against you and things of that nature. All right. So what what are some reasons that it can be that we don't want to forgive people? What are some reasons that we don't want to forgive people or that it's hard to forgive people? Oh, go ahead. 
I think it's precisely because uh, we do not make this kind of distinction. I believe that you think that if you forgive, they will take advantage of you again. Mm. I think the distinction needs to be made, if I understand you correctly, Brother Michael, that if it is one thing to forgive, but it doesn't mean you're going to put yourself again on harm's way. Right. You, you, you have to take your precautions, right? But I believe that when you think that if you forgive, they will take advantage of you again or they will hurt you again, that's what prevents us from forgiving. That's one of the things that come to my mind. Yeah. Yeah, we think we'll get it, get hurt again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we think we may get hurt again. I should, I need to write that down. Okay. Yeah, we may get hurt again. Um, another one is um, justice. You know, it's not fair. It's not fair. Why should I forgive them? You know, it's not. You know, they did something wrong. Therefore, why should I forgive them? Why should I forgive them? Uh, you know, when you think they don't deserve it, they don't deserve forgiveness. You know, we think, you know, they don't deserve it. Uh, another reason people don't forgive is they, they call, in church, we like to talk a lot now about righteous anger. Righteous anger. We say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm mad at it. You know, God would have been mad at it. Jesus was mad at it. So I should be mad at it. You know, I don't, I don't know where the Bible tells us about that, but It'll be righteous anger, righteous anger. But as we said, you know, there's a period when your anger becomes unforgiveness and then it, it's disobedience, it's regardless of the reason. You know, God doesn't say, you know, it's not based on the reason you're angry, whether you're right or you're wrong, that that has no bearing on it. You know, be slow to anger. Don't let the sun go down in your anger. It's not unless they did something unrighteous. It's like, no, it, it, the reason you're angry doesn't play a role in the in the picture. Another reason people don't want to let go to anger is uh they need an apology. You know, this person needs to apologize. You know, they need to apologize or or they need to accept the blame. They're not even admitting that they did it. They're not admitting that they did something wrong. You know, it's hard to forgive someone when they when they did something to you but they won't even fess up to actually doing it. That makes it really hard to forgive. Um, yeah, so, so those are some of the reasons that we discussed that keep people from forgiving. Uh, any thoughts on those reasons? Next we'll talk about reasons to forgive, but any thoughts on those reasons that keep people from forgiving? I, I find particularly telling the one of they need to apologize first. Yeah. I think that's very strong, very strong. It's like my forgiving is like telling them they were right, mm. that what they did was not so bad, that, um, uh, yeah, telling them they were right. I think that's one of the things that come to, at least to my mind, mm. why I sometimes don't forgive, you know? I, I need an apology first. Oh. How I feel. Uh. Well, yeah, I don't think forgiveness means you're telling them they were right. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean... I agree. I agree. I agree. It's the perception that we have. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you forgive, yeah, then, then, you're, then basically you're giving up your your stake on, you know, you were right. They were, you were right, yeah. so they owe you. And it's like, if I forgive, now I'm giving up. I'm giving that up. I think, hmm. It's like, I, they, I they, think they, that's the misconception. The misconception. It's like, yeah, I'm right. saying they were right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I have all right, so now we look at reasons to forgive. Chris, you have Ephesians 4.32? Yeah, yeah. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen. So be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other. So we want to forgive each other just as Christ forgave us. So consider how much we were forgiven. So Christ forgave us. He forgave us, you know, think of the biggest sin you ever committed. And then it's the biggest sin you ever committed compared to the holiness of God, the holiness of Christ. You know, so based on his standard, you know, how much did he forgive us? So if we look at that, how much have we been forgiven? How much have we been forgiven? And if we're focused on that, then that's one reason 
that we can that we can stomach or we can swallow forgiving. We can swallow forgiving. Another reason is that God actually rewards us for forgiving. Uh, you have pr Proverbs, John, Proverbs 25, 21 to 22. I do, brother. That's uh, Proverbs 25, right? Yes. 21 to 22. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. All right. So if you give you, so this is your enemy. Give him food to drink, and so basically, if you repay evil for good, the Lord will reward you. So we will get rewarded for it. You know, not exactly sure what that reward is, but but we will be rewarded for it. So it says, honor your mother and your father is a commandment of a promise. So this has a promise tied to it too. If you repay evil for good, you will be rewarded. You'll be rewarded from God. Another reason is unforgiveness affects your character. So not forgiving someone can affect. So sometimes you can become like the person you're angry at. So a lot of times you'll see someone who grew up in an abusive home and they become an abuser or you know someone so you you can become someone who was cheated on and they become a cheater you can you can take on the characteristics of the person who hurt you if you don't forgive them so if you don't forgive them now what they did has an influence on your life and it also uh let's look at a video on that happens to you when you hate watch this i'm gonna show you exactly what happens this is like a fruitful person but this is not for no reason this person is these seven things that love is they're patient kind truthful protect others they hope they persevere but in life people come along and they hurt us they can take your fruit they can't touch your root in other words they can hurt you but they can't change who you are so if you love through the hurt loving through the hurt keep protecting keep trusting restores everything that was taken from you the problem is we decide we're going to put ourselves first after we've been hurt. And then we become these eight things that love is not. We're angry, rude, envious, prideful, boastful. Now, this is no longer what someone did to us. This is what we're doing to ourselves. It's our own decision. And when we get here, unfortunately, we think it's everyone else's fault. So, hate destroys the haters. All in this book. So, so basically, if if we love through the hate, if we're kind and we're patient, then eventually, our we restored our our character gets restored. We can we can heal. We can heal from what they did if we're patient, if we're kind, if we're caring. But once we begin to change, become angry, become prideful, become bitter, become resentful, then we are we no longer are he, are self healing. We. we we, you know, we start going down a negative path. And then and at that point, it's no longer what they did. It's to change to our character that takes us down a negative path. You know, not, not that what they did wasn't wrong, but what they did now becomes us, becomes part of us that's also taking us down. Any thoughts? I didn't know my mic, my mic was still on. If we wait for their apology, it leaves them in control. Mm. And, and uh, I, you know, uh, I, I did have somebody apologize after 20 years of complaining, and all they did was say, I'm sorry. That was not satisfying at all. So I think that oh. we should not need an apology. Uh, don't require an apology to be part of the healing process. And mm. um, that way, you you're still in control. If you wait for their apology, they're never gonna. Some people just can't apologize. They don't know how to do it. Uh, and and God's and but yeah, he, we're supposed to forgive them and love them. I, I'm gonna love you by making sure that you have food to eat, water to drink, and a place to live. If you need something up, uh, uh, in that area, I'll help you. If not, have a nice day. I don't have to hang out with you. 
If you hurt me, God doesn't say I have to be your buddy. But I will treat you like one of God's creatures. If you're hungry, I'll feed you. If, you know, that type of thing. And, and that's the type of love I think they're referring to, not hang out with you every day kind of love after you've offended me and never apologized properly. But I can purge my system mm. and treat you like a, with respect and love. Right. And, 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 and I feel okay inside after that. Right. Yeah. So you're not necessarily called to have a restored relationship or even if there was never a relationship, you're not required to develop a relationship with the person. Forgiving doesn't mean that you know, that there's reconciliation. So Jesus does want us to reconcile, but that's separate than forgiving. So reconciliation and forgiving are two separate things. So I find it interesting. Yeah, interesting. You, you said a person, you wanted them to apologize for 20 years and they said, I'm sorry. And so, yeah, so it goes to show it. But, and that wasn't enough. They didn't apologize in the way you wanted them to apologize. And so, yeah, if we get caught up, so, so we can get caught up to where they, they, if they, I'm going to be okay, not just if they apologize, but if they do it in this way at this time under these conditions, then I'm going to be okay. And so you're putting a lot of power in them, putting a lot of power on them. Uh, like, like you, like you said, and actually I'll go ahead and, uh, that'll, um, go ahead and that, that bring jump ahead to, yeah, what they did has two consequences to us. So what they did to us has two consequences. What they did has, it has the harm that they did to us. So maybe it's the money we're missing. Maybe it's the betrayal that we felt. Maybe it's the physical pain that they put us through. Maybe it's the lack of trust now that we have. Maybe it's the, 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 feel, the fact that we can't have intimate relationships with people anymore because we were scarred so badly. So what they did harmed us. But on the other side, we also have what they did caused us now to be bitter caused us now to not trust, caused us to, you know, lack intimacy. So, so there's one is the physical harm. My money's gone. I'm in pain. But then there's the emotional side. There's the emotional things that I suffered because of it. And so we look at it and say, you know, we want them to say, I'm sorry, want, want them to admit it. And so, you know, thinking that that may, a, that may repay the harmful thing that they did, the money that's gone, the pain that they caused us. But then we have to look at it from the other side. It's like, okay, what is going to heal this emotional state that I'm in today, the bitterness I have, the unforgiveness that I have. And, and we don't want to let them be the one that controlling how I do this healing. And, you know, the unfortunate thing is that the path to that healing of yourself generally goes through you it starts with you forgiving them so it's like what they did how they harmed you is one thing but now it's where you are at now your bitterness your your not trusting people your inability to have intimate relationships that's now that's a problem that you have and so if you want to heal that is not you you want you need to go through the path of forgiveness you know so it's like regardless of whether they benefit from it or not you know they may benefit from it unjustly and didn't deserve it so they may get some unjust benefit from it but it's like but do you deserve the healing from it it's like okay they you know they may not deserve it but it's like do you deserve it now it's like now if you want to become fully you know if you you want to become fully healed you may need to go through the path of forgiving. And that's kind of independent of that person. That's independent of that person. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times we have emotional triggers. So we have emotional triggers caused by what they did. If somebody says something that reminds you of what they did, that person cheated on you. So now whenever you, if you see somebody who, oh, you know, they, they, they looked at their phone, they got a message and they, they put it back in their pocket, you know, or they, or they didn't, you know, they, they, they came home later than they said they would. And so, so something someone else does, it triggers you and you get upset, but 
you're not necessarily just upset with what they did. You're, you're upset with what the original person did to you. So you're being triggered by, and, that, and that's because of the unforgiveness. So the unforgiveness causes you to be triggered triggered from, from the unhealed wound because you haven't forgiven them. So a lot of your emotional triggers are caused by not forgiving. So I'll play a video that uh, speaks to that a bit. That you have unforgiveness in you. You do not have the mind of Christ. And your mind has not been renewed. And you are conformed to the pattern of this earth. Because every time you get triggered, you feel just like you felt at the time you didn't forgive. And you're conformed to the pattern of this earth. And you got clutter in your mind. That interferes with hearing God. You know, if I didn't forgive my dad at five years old for calling me stupid, then I have got a part of my mind that's not been renewed. And any time that one somebody here says, that sounds stupid, Gene, my conscious mind goes to my subconscious mind and sends the same exact emotions into my body, and I am conformed to five years old. I feel like a five-year-old angry little boy. You see this? I am conformed to the pattern of this earth at that age emotionally where I did not forgive. That you have unforgiveness in you. You do not. All right, so if you didn't forgive, then the wound you have, the unhealed wound, is based on that event that you haven't forgiven. Until you forgive, you can't fully heal from that. Another reason to forgive is that unforgiveness gives Satan access to your life. So in the parable of the unforgiving servant, it talks about a servant who master forgave him of a big debt. And then he went and found somebody who owed him a smaller debt and punished him. So the master heard about it and punished him. And Jesus said, this is how your father is with you. And, and he said, you know, that... that uh, you'd be tortured. And so the in the parable, so the torture, God turning you over to the torture is basically God turning you over to Satan. If you don't forgive, God has forgiven you of a great debt. But if you don't forgive, God will turn you over to Satan to be tortured. And it's not, it's not talking about you're going to go to hell if you don't forgive somebody. It's talking about here on earth. It's talking about here and now. So uh, John, you have Ephesians four twenty six to twenty eight. I do. In your anger, do not do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, mm -hmm. but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those who need. All right. So, yeah, so don't let the sun go down on your anger or you'll give the devil an opportunity. So it says, so the sun going down on your anger. So you can you can get angry. So if somebody does something, you get angry. Maybe you respond. That's that's not a sin. I mean, you know, obviously, depending on how you respond, you could respond with sin. But the anger itself, it, the anger can cause you to sin. So in your anger, do not sin. So the anger can cause you to sin. But then it says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. So now it's talking about a time component. It's not necessarily, okay, soon as sunset, you know, in the wintertime, I got it until 7.30. In the summertime, I got I to gotta forgive at 6.30 because, you know, it's not, it's not a specifically the sun, but it, there's a component. There's a time when your anger turns into unforgiveness. And when your anger becomes unforgiveness, it says you're giving the devil an opportunity. So your unforgiveness gets so basically you're being turned over to the devil. When you when you don't forgive, now you're giving the devil an opportunity to act in your life. The devil has an opportunity to trigger you now. Whenever somebody bring when you, the devil has an opportunity to make you mad when he brings that memory to your mind. Now if you don't forgive somebody with something, he can just bring that memory to your mind, and now all of a sudden you're in a bad mood. Now all of a sudden you're yelling at people, you're snapping at people, you're you're flipping people off on the freeway. Because you haven't forgiven, so you, now you, the devil has access to you. The devil has access and he can control you. So you're giving the devil an opportunity. 
So you're giving the devil an opportunity if you don't forgive. So that's another reason to forgive is you're giving the devil an opportunity to interfere or interact in your life and to control your life. And it impacts your relationship with God. So it, it impacts your, your, your ability to, to listen to and obey the Holy Spirit. And then the final reason to forgive is to trust that the judgment will be done. So someday God will judge them. God will judge them one day. And so, so trust that judgment will be done. Judgment is mine. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So those are the reasons to forgive. Any thoughts? I think that's probably the, the, the most important reason to forgive. Meaning that the, the Lord will, will, will take care mm. of it all. No, the vengeance is mine, of course. Of course, yes. Yes. Justice is given by the Lord of Justice, no? Not not by imperfect people like us. Right, right. Yeah, okay. amen. Yeah, God will take care of it. So trusting that God will will let justice happen. You know, it's not our job to make sure justice happens, you know. All right. So now, now let's look at parents. So look at our parents. So specifically now, so that those can apply to anyone, anyone who's wronged you. All of those things can, you know, that forgiveness is anyone, an enemy, anyone who's wronged you. So now let's look specifically at parents, forgiving parents. So uh, we'll watch a video. Let's, let's look at a video talking about that. So we talked about honoring your parents. Let's look at a video on this. <clears throat> that that would that would warrant that. And by the way, almost all of us are are are, are actual parents. The ones who raise us are somewhere between the extremes of absolutely demonic and and absolutely perfect. Right? Most of them are kind of in between. Somewhere on the spectrum. But I'll deal with the worst case scenario because if we get the worst case scenario, the other ones come easy. And so even if you lived in a worst case scenario. Something maybe as terrible as sexual abuse going on. The promise of the, of the word is that it's good for you, it's good for you, to be committed to honoring them and blessing them and loving them, uh, despite all the stuff that went on. Now, how do you love, how do you love and honor and pray for and bless uh, people in the worst case scenario, when, when, when the parents were absolutely terrible? It's tough, all right. See, I, I think it's actually impossible unless you're first willing to forgive. That's All right, so not only is it tough, it's impossible to honor them unless you forgive. Unless you forgive. It's impossible to honor them unless you forgive. And we're commanded to honor them. <clears throat> and and not forgiving your parents, not only does it impact you and your character, but it also impacts your relationships. So your relationships, specific, especially your romantic relationships, because a lot the, the issues, a lot of the emotional triggers that we have in life were caused by our parents. You know, not all of them. You could have issues happen all through your life, but a lot, a lot of times we have issues... Whatever we had happen as a child, we carry it on through our adult life. And a lot of time when we get into romantic relationships, the thing that the person triggers in us is a wound that we haven't healed from, from our parents. Oftentimes it's a wound. We like So if our parents you know, didn't pay attention to us, when that other person doesn't pay attention to us, we get triggered. And so whatever, so oftentimes it, it's a wound from our parents and if we if we don't forgive that we can't heal from that here's a video on that many of the issues that we have in life actually originate from unforgiveness of parents and we've talked we learned in the other classes that when you get married 
your spouse replaces both your mother and your father. And whatever issues you have left over from your mother and father, when your spouse says or does anything similar to that, then you get triggered with those same exact emotions that you felt when you was a child with your mother and father. And so the deception is that you're angry with your spouse. That's the deception, is it? Because your spouse just said something or did something, your conscious mind goes back to your subconscious mind and says, have we ever experienced that before? And says yes, and sends those same exact emotions into your body. And so the deception is that you believe that you're mad at your spouse. Now, who are you really mad with? You have many of the issues that we have in life actually are so a lot of times, you know, we think we're mad at our spouse, but deep down, it's, we're still mad at something that we haven't healed from that our parents did. And so not forgiving impacts our current relationships, it carries on into our current relationships. And the way to heal that is to forgive or I mean, that's not that's the, f the first step in it. And, you know, that we'll talk about um, a couple of ways. But I've even had, uh, there were two people who actually left this Bible study and they, they cited the reason as I reminded them of their father. You know, they left the Bible study because I reminded them of their father. And so it's, so yeah, we carry on the wounds from, I mean, at least they were self-aware enough to know that that will, you know, other people probably, they don't know that. Is something triggered in them that reminds them of their father, but they were, at least they were self-aware enough to know that, you know, something that I said or the demeanor reminded them of their father, and they and they obviously had a contentious relationship with their father. Um, so yes, yeah, so whatever issues you have left over from your father and mother, you're going to carry on with you. Any thoughts? Any thoughts on that? Okay. Okay, so now we'll talk about the fact that you're the best. Oh, Sorry to interrupt. Oh, okay, go ahead. What you're saying is it's, it's, really, it's, it's really painful mm. because I see myself many times in my relationship with my own son now. And sometimes I do, I do badly. I remember my father also doing with me. I, I, I can like almost see myself when I yell at my son. Mm. You know, I, I, but I shouldn't, sometimes for no reason. And then I have this, uh, what's the word, deja vu? Deja vu, yeah. So my, my father doing that with me and how that made me feel. And then I have this, wow, it's like this realization. I'm doing the same thing with my boy sometimes, at least. Yeah, I guess you want to be careful how you sometimes replicate those behaviors. No, and, and, and no, it's not exactly the same as being angry at your father and you think you're angry at somebody else but or, or your mother and you think it's somebody else but uh, again it's like it repeats itself no? yeah happens again you carry it with you and it just sometimes explodes with without you noticing why mm. yeah it carries into your and it does, yeah so it's not just romantic relationships it's it's any close, any close relationship, any close relationship, uh, you know, so wh wherever any relationship where you, where you uh, have gotten past the pretense where you're not, you're not just showing your, you know, it's like your coworkers, you, you're showing your good side, you know, but any relationship where you get past the good side and, you, and they get to see the real you, that's when, that's when it comes out, you know, any relationship where the person gets to see the real you. Yeah, and so the issue is if you if you haven't healed from them, then they they can come back up. They can come back up, and you can, you can you can model that you can uh, mimic those behaviors unconsciously if you haven't healed from them. <clears throat> and so a lot of times, as grown parents, grown parents want to come back. They realize that they messed up, and then they try to come back in 
to their grown kids' life and play a role in it. And a lot of times, you know, they want to take over their choices or they want to try to control them. And and it gets uh, can get can get bad. And they, they think they're doing a good thing because it's like, hey, I messed up. Let me try to make it better. But but they aren't the one who needs to make it better. You know, the issue is so the is that you. You are the best person. You are the person best suited to heal yourself from the wounds that were done. You are the person best suited to heal, not them. And so you can't, you don't want to be dependent on them for your healing. You, you're the one best suited. Uh, here's a video speaking to that. It's not your fault. But you're the one best suited to go about your own healing. Because when a parent tries to do that retroactively, it turns into weird control and codependency and criticism. And you feel that. Like, you feel the awkwardness of it, don't you? Like, when you're in that situation, it just doesn't feel appropriate. Because it's not. And so when you're holding on to resentment, when you're holding on to this debt, with the internal emotional demand that they make it better, that they make you feel better, or undo the pain and suffering that's been a consequence of their insufficient parenting, you're, you're setting up a game that's meant for them to fail. And you're inviting weird codependency and criticism. So what do you do? You let go of the debt. You take it upon yourself to heal, to repair the damage done. It's not fair, but you're best suited for it. Um, and that doesn't necessarily, then it's not your fault. Mm. So letting go of the debt. Letting go of the debt and taking on the healing on your own. So let you know, letting go of the debt that they need to apologize. They need to. They need to, you, that you need revenge on them, that they need to admit they were wrong. So the best thing to do is to let go of the debt, and to take on the healing yourself. Take on the healing yourself. And so now we'll talk about how to forgive. How do you forgive? How do you forgive? Uh, someone or how do you forgive your parents or anyone well specifically your parents how do you forgive your parents so when you forgive your parents what well, we, we want to forgive our parents we're forgiving them for the perception that we had as a child so we, so which may or may not even have actually been reality so i'll give you an example is when i grew up with my dad i grew up and my mom was always there, was always spending time with us, but my dad was hardly there. So my perception is, oh, you know, mom loves us more because dad is never spending time with us. Mom spends all this time with us, but dad doesn't spend time with us. You know, the reality of it was is that my father worked two jobs so that my mother could be a stay-at-home mom. So, you know, obviously she spent more time with us, but I, but, you know, I didn't see that you know Annie went to Annie was going to college so I, I didn't appreciate that I just knew that he he wasn't there and she was there and so what I need to do is forgive him for not being there forgive him for not spending time with me so you need to forgive from whatever your perception was you need to forgive them of it so we need to forgive from the perception of what we thought they did wrong at the time and so it's not really a, 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 ma a matter of determining was it, was it right, was it wrong. It's, it's just a matter of forgiving it and letting it go. Forgiving it and letting it go. Any comments? Yeah, Mike, uh, there was a, a, a show on TV, it may still come on, and it's about reuniting children that were given up for adoption to their, to, uh, and they're mm. finding their natural parents. And an example is a 16-year-old girl gives up a child for adoption. The child uh, is adopted by a, 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 a decent family that gives her all the support and everything else. And so uh, 22 years later, the child graduates from college and finds her mother, who's only 38 years old, mm. 
and maybe still having some bad habits that she's still dealing with, and you wind up with a child that's more mature than the parent, mm. and, and that's what they're finding out often, or a child that has better values than the parent. And that's another awkward situation. You've got to deal with forgiving them, and they're realizing that, you know, if the parent might have been a high school dropout and they just finished college, they've grown up in a much better, more affluent situation than their parent did. Right. And now they, you know, that's an awkward thing to have to reconcile. And, and a lot of times I don't think it gets reconciled. The parent winds up be, becoming ashamed and things of that nature or vice versa, you know. But it's another problem outside of just forgiving them, you know. Hmm, Yeah. Yes, and the, yeah, and, and and so she would need to forgive for like she, all the time she's growing up. She's like, you know, why did she leave me? She didn't love me, you know. Not realizing that, you know, she was in a much better situation because of it, or or the reason for it. But but yeah, it can, yeah, there can. She may, she may have a much more mature thought process than her parent. Oh yeah, or, you yeah, know, be, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And when you when you have a you got a college degree and your parent may have dropped out of high school, you can see things more than they can see if, even if they're older, and, and that's the weird thing, you know, uh, that that. Uh, but that's ha happening more and more the way our society is going, where children are able to locate their birth parents mm. and see the situation that they came out of, and sometimes it's not very flattering. Yeah. Yeah, and some and some people are able to see it. You know, their parent. You know, they were the first one to go to college, but and so they 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 went were in a much better situation than their parents. And you know, sometimes it's because of their parents' struggle. Sometimes it's in spite of their parents' neglect. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's a yeah, it's difficult, and it's difficult, especially because you, you you know it's easy to look down on the on the other person then. As well, yeah. A lot, a lot of complications. You know, you 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 you're adopted and you grow up on a, on the other mm. side of the tracks. Yeah. You know, then you have and you find out where your, your mom is from, and you have to reconcile that. And it's you know, life is tough enough. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. But when you find out you're more mature and you think clearer than your parents. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that can be tough as well. Yeah. Okay, so when we forgive, so when we forgive our parents, we want to forgive them specifically. So we don't want to just say like, oh, I forgive my dad for all the bad things he did. So like if I was forgiving someone, you know, that I was in a relationship with, I wouldn't want to just say, oh, I forgive her for, you know, what she did wrong. It's like I, I would say, I'll, I forgive you for that tone of voice you use. I forgive you for wrongly accusing me. I forgive you for pointing your finger at me. I forgive you that you embarrassed me in front of your mom and dad. I forgive you that you didn't respect me and you didn't honor me. I forgive that you didn't believe me when I told you the truth and I release you in the name of Jesus. So when we forgive, so now we're talking about how to forgive. When we forgive, we want to be specific. We want to be specific about what we perceive that they did to us wrong. And we want to forgive that. We want to forgive specifically for what we perceive that they did wrong. You know, not just a general forgiveness, oh, I forgive you. We want to be specific about what you're forgiving them about. And it may have many layers. So it's like what you said, also that you pointed your finger, that you were disrespecting me, that, you know, so, so it may have many layers and you want to forgive for whatever you were injured or hurt by or took offense to. Um, another thing about forgiving is that it, it may be a continual thing. Like you mentioned that the guy whose dad lived in the same town and denied him lack of character another thing to understand with forgiveness is that forgiveness is a continuous practice you know there are some situations where someone betrays you and you actually still have to see the person you know whether that's 
you know, an ex-spouse that now you have to co-parent with and they betrayed you in some way, or maybe a family member that you still see at, you know, Christmas or family functions or things like that. So there are situations where when someone betrays you, you still have to see them from time to time. And how do we deal with that? And, you know, forgiveness, like I said, can be a continuous process where you're constantly saying, okay, I forgive you. I re-forgive you. Okay. You know, and it's not something that you can just say, okay, I forgive you. And like all is well, we have to really in our minds, keep that cycle of, okay, I forgive you. Okay. I forgive you because the wounds that that person put on us are still in us. And until we really heal them, we have to continue that process of forgiveness and lack of character. All right, so we may have to continually forgive the person. It's not necessarily always a one-time thing, especially if we're still in, well, I guess if we're still in relationship with them, it, it may be a continuous process, which makes it more difficult. Um, let's see. So you don't necessarily have to forgive them in person. You don't necessarily have to tell them you forgave them. Um, you can do that. So some people recommend doing it. It's not, it's, you can forgive them without specifically. So forgiving isn't necessarily the, just the process of you going to that person and telling them you forgive them. You can forgive them without telling them. But if you do tell them you forgive them, then your goal should be to tell them you forgive them. Your goal shouldn't be for them to say, oh, I'm sorry. And oh, you're right. And oh, thank you. You know, because a lot of times people do that and what happens is, you know, that, that they don't get what they are looking for. They, they don't get the apology. They don't get the admittance of blame. They don't get the, oh, I didn't even, you know, you may get, I didn't even do that. And so you shouldn't, if you're going to forgive someone in person, you shouldn't go with the goal of them giving you a specific response. If you're forgiving them, then your goal is to forgive them. And regardless of how they respond, and, and you want to not, you know, a lot of people, they'll go tell somebody to forgive them. And then 10 minutes later, they're in a fight. I didn't do this. Yes, you did. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's like, it's like if, if your goal is going there, forgive that you, you should avoid any confrontation. You, you know, you don't, don't start a confrontation. Don't sustain it. You know, your goal is just to tell them you forgive, you know, but again, as I said, it's not, it's not a necessary step for forgiveness. You know, especially like people who've passed on, you can't tell them in person. So it's not necessary that you necessarily confront them in person to forgive them. Mike, the thing that's made it easier for me to forgive someone or to move on is you said it earlier, vengeance belongs to God. Mm. So if you turn the situation, the dilemma over to God, whatever it is, and say, God, in, on judgment day, you will decide You'll, you know, make a decision and that's your prerogative. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to turn the whole situation over to you. I'm not going to feel offended because I know you're going to, that you're going to step forward and do vengeance where vengeance is deserved. And as a, a, a Christian, having faith and trust in God should be able to do, to deal, to do that, use that tool and say, God's going to handle it and, 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 and be at ease with the situation. In my opinion, I think that that's, that's the way it should be. Mm. Vengeance belongs to God. It says it in the Bible, give God what belongs to him and let him take care of it. And let, and we don't need to try to be handling it on our own. Right. And that was also John's, uh, that was John's, uh, biggest point as well, or his biggest, uh, reason that he mentioned as well. Yeah. That, that realizing that God will take care of it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, if you're a solid Christian and you trust God and he said it, then you believe it. Act like you believe it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amen. Yeah. All right, and, uh, and so, so most of this discussion is about forgiving in the past, but then also we're looking at one practice of how you forgive for a situation that you're in, you're currently in a situation, you're in an argument or something, you know, how do you forgive? So it's, it's again, you want to forgive specifically. So here's an example of how you forgive in the moment. You don't let the emotions 
take control over you. So you get angry. Don't let the anger take control over you. Don't let the disrespect take control over you. Right there. You did a good job. Now, when you don't obey that emotion, it begins to lose its power. So when you feel like slamming on the door, you look at your wife or you look at the other person who triggered you and you go, I'll be back in a couple minutes. And you walk outside and Gordon, I forgive you. I forgive you for looking at me that way. I forgive that you made this a big deal. I forgive that you pointed your finger at me. I forgive that you looked at me that way. I forgive that you keep accusing me of that same thing that I haven't done. And I release you of that energy. You are forgiven. Oh, anger, go away. Go away. Go. That 10 just went down just a little bit, didn't it? I didn't obey it. Instead, I obeyed. Started getting free of that. You see, there's many ways to get free. Right there, you know. All right. So don't obey the emotion. So when you when you get an emotion, anger, don't let that emotion control you. Don't obey what the emotion is telling you to do. And so that's one exercise of how to take control of over the emotion. All right. All right. So now we're going to do an exercise. We're going to do it. One, well, first we'll talk about it. So we're going to do an exercise of forgiveness. So steps of forgiving it from the past. And so basically we want to forgive for the memory again, the memory of what we have that they did, how we perceived it. And so you want to make a list. So you, can, you don't necessarily have to make a list now, but you, we want to make a list, a list in your head, or list, a list of the things that you need to forgive your parents for. And so you want to think back. Think back and ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind <clears throat> so that this is a, the exercise of how we're forgiven. So you want to ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind things that they did between the ages of one and six that, that you need to forgive them for, between one-year-old and six-year-old. You know, what, what, what are the things that they did between the ages of six-year-old and 12-year-old that you need to forgive for? What did they did to things between the ages of 12-year-old and 18-year-old? You know, was it prom night, first date that you need to forgive for? What are the things they did between the ages of 18 to 25? College and school, no financial help. That you need to forgive them for or what is anything else that brought you hurt and so then you want to imagine yourself at that at that age at that age and so here is um an example of that or description of that close your eyes and you can say holy spirit would you take me back there just as if i am a little boy right now and the age where I was angry with my mother, where I was angry with my father. Would you take me back there now? And then you want to just look at your mother and look at your father, whoever it is that you didn't forgive. And it doesn't have to be mom or dad. It could be anybody that's back there that you haven't forgiven. And you want to look at them just as if you are that little boy or that little girl. And you want to look at them and you want to be very specific, just like I was with Lord when I forgave her. You want to say, Dad, I forgive you for being unjust with me. I forgive you that you, you spanked me so hard that it was more like a beating than, than it was discipline. I forgive you that you didn't come and comfort me. I forgive you that you didn't come and ask to be forgiven. I forgive you that you didn't tell me you were sorry. I forgive you that I felt like you hated me. And I release you of that in Jesus' name. And then you take a deep breath and you let all that anger, all that bitterness, the resentment, and the fear, you just let it all go and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. I'll close your eyes and you can say, Holy Spirit, will you take me... All right. So basically you want to list out everything that they did. <clears throat> and so now uh, we're going to go through an exercise. So it may, it may be like a 20 minute exercise. So basically I'm going to list out things, list out things that your parents may have done to you. And if there's something that resonates with you, you can say, I forgive you for that. I forgive you, dad. Or I forgive you, mom, for that. And so now I'm just going to spend the next 
15 minutes listing out things that we may, may need to forgive them for. And so, like for me, it was some things that I, some things resonated with me, but I never even thought about that. It's like, oh, I mean, there are going to be some, obviously, some things that, you know, have no relation to your relationship at all. But, you know, there may, but then there will, there will be some that will resonate. And so you can, you know, just, you can just think back. If you want to close your eyes or not, you can think back of, of, of this time. And I'm just going to, for the next 15 minutes, list out things. And when I say the things, you can say, I forgive you, dad, for that. Or I forgive you, mom, for that. And so I'm just going to read out through a list, read out through a list for the next 15 minutes. So be for you guys and anyone else watching this video later, um, that you can forgive. All right, so, so I'm gonna read off things that we may wanna forgive them for, and then you can say, I forgive you, mom, or I forgive you, dad, for that. All right. So I forgive you because even though you provided for me and was there, I didn't feel you loved by you. I forgive you because I don't remember sitting in your lap with your arms around me feeling safe. I forgive you because you didn't play with me. You didn't play dress up. You didn't play baseball. I forgive you because you didn't help me with my schoolwork, with my sports, with my instrument. I forgive you because you didn't come to any of my sports events. You didn't come to any of my music recitals. I forgive you for how I felt when you looked up and saw the empty seat at the game. I forgive you I saw all the mothers, all the other fathers in the stands, but I didn't see you. I forgive you because you didn't care. I forgive you because you didn't want me in your life. I forgive you because I was not affirmed by you. I forgive you because you ignored me. I forgive you because you were jealous of the relationship I had with mom or dad. I forgive you because I was afraid to talk to you when you talk to them when you were around. I forgive you because I felt like I was betraying you if I had a relationship with them. I forgive you because you were an alcoholic. I forgive you because you used drugs. I forgive you for the way you behaved when you were drunk. I forgive you, mom, forgive you, dad. You were always yelling. You made me terrified. When you and mom, dad used to fight and yell so loud, I had to put my hands over my ears. I forgive you for when you hit mom, dad, you threatened them, pushed them against the wall. When I woke up in the morning, I would wonder if they were dead. Forgive you for how you reacted when I brought my schoolwork home. Forgive you no matter how good my grade was, it wasn't good enough for you. I forgive you that I felt like you rejected me. I forgive you for you left us and went to a new family. You loved them more than you loved us. You went to their school functions and didn't come to mine. You didn't come back. You didn't call me. You abandoned us. I forgive you because you didn't support us. You didn't check on us. I forgive you for on those special holidays, there was an empty chair and you used to sit in, where you used to sit, on Thanksgiving, on Christmas. I forgive you from Mother's Day, Father's Day was so confusing. It was hard to find a card for you. Forgive you for it because I forgot what you look like. I had to keep looking at a picture to remember. I forgot the sound of your voice. Every time a stranger's car parked in front of the house, I wondered if it might be you. Every time someone knocked on the door and rang the doorbell, I wondered if it might be you. I forgive you that you didn't come visit me. You forgot about me. For, forgive you that I felt it was my job to take care of mom, to take care of dad, because you weren't there. 
Forgive you for the guilt I felt because I couldn't do it. I couldn't take care of the house. I forgive you for all those nights I cried myself to sleep, wondering where you were and why you weren't with us. Forgive you that I felt like you loved my sibling more than me. You bragged on them and affirmed them. You didn't bond with me as a child. You never really felt that I was yours. You never really made a spiritual or emotional connection. I felt like everybody else and everything else was more important than me. I forgive you for those names you called me, the names you called mom, dad, my brothers, my sisters. Forgive you for touching me in ways that you shouldn't. You exposed your nakedness to me. I was confused. I cried myself to sleep wondering why you didn't love me. Forgive you for allowing others to touch me in ways that they shouldn't and not protecting me. For not knowing what was going on. For not asking me what was wrong. For not noticing the change in me that I had become withdrawn and depressed. I forgive you that you weren't safe to talk to. That I couldn't come to you with the things that confuse me. I forgive you that when I came to you, you pushed me away. That other things were more important. The television. You shushed me. I forgive you that you weren't available. That you never really made time for me. Your sports were more important. Work was more important. You wanted to spend time with your friends. I forgive you that I was afraid of you. That when I heard your car, I was afraid. When I heard the door open, suddenly you came in and you were mad. And I had to hide. And I was afraid that you would find me. Forgive you, no matter how hard I tried, I never seemed to have been able to please you. For all those things that you asked me to do, and I was too small to do. I forgive you that you asked me to do things that I, you hadn't taught me to do. For punishing me for making mistakes, like I had done something wrong on purpose. All the times you said you should have known, but you never taught me. I forgive you for the injustice in that. Forgive you that I had so many anxiety and fear around you that I did it wrong. Forgive you that I don't have good memories like running and jumping in your arms when you come home. I don't have good memories of you being excited to see me and your, and your eyes sparkling. Forgive you that I don't have memories of you looking at me and your eyes telling me that you love me, that I was special, that you were proud of me. Forgive you that I never felt like you cared about me, that you never celebrated my birthday as if you weren't glad that I'm on this earth. I forgive you that I feel like you would love me more if I had been a different sex. I forgive you that you made me feel like I was a mistake, that I shouldn't have been born. I forgive you that I wanted somebody else to be my mommy, my daddy. I forgive you that I was envious of, of my friends for having a parent that they had. I forgive you that you didn't play with me or interact with me. That you made me feel like I was invisible to you. That you didn't say prayers with me at night. You didn't talk to me about Jesus. I forgive you that I was afraid of you coming into my room. When you walked in my room, I would panic wondering what I did wrong. I forgive you that I never felt safe with you. That you weren't there when I needed you. Forgive you that you never understood me or accepted me for who I am. I forgive you that I got your leftovers, that I felt expendable to you. I forgive you for accusing me of lying. I forgive you that you broke your promises often, that you didn't come when you said you would come. You didn't visit when you said you would visit. You didn't send the card. You didn't send a letter. You didn't send a present. I forgive you that I wasn't a priority. I forgive you for making me feel like I was a burden to you, for blaming me for the problems between you and mom and you and dad. 
I felt like I was the one that had to fix you guys. I had to be the intermediary. I had to comfort you guys and make it okay. I had to grow up too fast. I lost my childhood. I was always thinking about what I could do to make mom, dad feel better. I forgive you that I wasn't allowed to say no for that certain look you would give me when I knew I was in trouble. I forgive you for that tone of voice you use. I forgive you for all those times you embarrassed me over and over. I forgive you that I couldn't have friends over that house because of how you reacted. That our, that our home was such chaos and disorder that I felt embarrassed to invite anybody over. I forgive you that when I did invite kids over, you made fun of them and teased them. I forgive you that you teased me and embarrassed me. I forgive you that I lost so many friends because of you. I forgive you that they never wanted to come to our house and play. I forgive you that deep down you taught me to hate you. I forgive you for the empty seat in the living room. That it was just never the same after you left. That the house just seemed empty. That I didn't know your voice anymore. I forgive you that it was worse than if you had died because I knew you were still alive, but you still weren't in my life. I forgive you for the nights I cried myself to sleep, wondering why you didn't want me, what was wrong with me, why was I so defective that you didn't want me. I forgive you for the hours you would lie in bed, that I would lie in bed at night wondering about this. I forgive you how I feel when I see other mothers, fathers interacting with their children. I forgive you that when you left me alone, when you went to the parties, left me all by myself. F forgive me when you came back and you would look for stuff in the house that I didn't do. And you would get so angry. I forgive you that I loved you and hate you at the same time. I forgive you that I felt invisible when I walked into the kitchen and you shushed me. I forgive you that I couldn't interrupt you when you were on the phone. I could not get your attention. I forgive you that what I had to say was not important. I forgive you that you didn't teach me the things I needed to know, how to make my bed, how to cook, the things adults need to do. You didn't teach me about finances. You didn't teach me about life. I forgive me that you didn't set a good example as a mother, as a wife, as a father, as a husband, as a human being. I forgive you that you never read stories to me or sung lullabies. That bedtime was, was not a safe time. I forgive you for those names you called me, stupid. Dummy, worthless. Forgive you for the times that I came home and there was nobody there. There was nothing to eat. That you didn't care. Forgive you that I couldn't talk to you about things that were on my mind. You didn't listen, didn't have time to listen. Forgive you for all the times you told me that I shouldn't feel that way, that something was wrong with me. Forgive you for all the broken promises, the times when you said you would do things and you didn't, the places you said we'd go and we never went. Forgive you all the times you said we'd play and we didn't. I forgive you that we didn't spend special time with me. Forgive you that you never grew up emotionally. You still act like a child. You didn't want to, that I didn't want to grow up to be like you. I wanted to be the opposite of you. Forgive me that there was nothing to brag about you. That there was nothing honorable about you. That you weren't respectable. Forgive me that when I think about you, I don't get a warm, fuzzy feeling. That you never talk to me about who you are. Forgive me that we were strangers as a child. And we still are. You really don't know who I am. Forgive me that if we talk, I have to be the one to call. If we visit, I have to be the one to see. Even though you don't call, you still get angry and complain if I don't. I forgive you that when I go to see you, it's so awkward. The children don't know how to behave around you. 
They have to be afraid to act like children around you because you'll be bothered. I forgive you for not being the grandfather, the grandmother to your grandkids. You aren't in their lives. I forgive you that we are not family. I forgive you how awkward it is when you come to visit. I forgive you that you died before making any of this right. So that's the forgiveness list. So I ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind anything else that you need to forgive them for. Anything else that bothered you, anything else that angered you, anything else that you haven't released that they've done. I ask the Holy Spirit to bring it to mind and forgive them. them is a final video as you forgave your father on behalf of the body of Christ you are forgiven you are forgiven of your unforgiveness you're forgiven for holding that all these years I forgive you for your bitterness your resentment your hatred your anger and we place the cross of Jesus between you and those sins of unforgiveness. Darkness, you've lost your authority to torture them. You will loose them of this now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath, each one of you. Take a deep breath and let it go. Let it go. All the hurt, the pain, the anger, the bitterness, the resentment, the hate. Let it go. Just let it go. Another deep breath. Just let it all go. Every bit of it. Just let it all go. And Holy Spirit, fill them with peace. Just breathe in the peace. Just breathe it in. Just breathe it in. And we seal that peace within you. In Jesus. As okay. So that was that was the forgiveness exercise. And uh, hopefully that helped help forgive, help to release anything that was holding on to you or that you were holding on to. Any thoughts or comments? I think that was a very, very specific list of yeah. many things that I, I, many of the points that you mentioned, I hadn't thought of. Right. But I think they, they do, they do have an impact or have had an impact in my life. Um, of course. Of course, I am also thankful mm, yeah. that um, while my parents, my dad, is no longer with me, I mean, he passed away, uh, while he was not perfect by no stretch of the imagination, he, he also, he was a good man. He was a good man. Mm. Mm. And I, I, I do need to forgive, of course, of course. But... It was a good dad. Mm. Mm. Yeah, going through the list, I also felt I was like, "Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that." You know, when it's, my mom used to always shush me when I, she was on the phone. She was always on the phone in the kitchen. It was like, yeah, and I never thought about you know that definitely bothered me at the time, and mm. it just. Well, and or, then, or some of the things that that parents, my mother did with all her heart. With her best intention, and that yet can actually be very uh, 
harmful I nowadays I still when I am in a context in which I I need to express myself sometimes. I still feel my mom's voice telling me, shh, no, 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 no. You, you just keep quiet, you don't talk, you just shh, don't, don't bother, because she wanted to protect me. Mm. She didn't want me to be rejected by others. And that shadow is still in with me when I need to, to communicate something. No? And I, I feel like over-criticized, but it's only here, maybe just here. Mm. Mm. Bad oh wow, yeah. You still hear it, yeah. You still hear the voice in your head, yeah, that's... Yeah, I think so. Somehow. Yeah, so how that impacts you. And I guess, yeah, and a lot of times people hear like, you know, talked about, you know, parents calling you stupid or something and that. And those, and when you do something wrong, you say it. You say whatever they used to say to you. Yes. And it's, and you hear that. You're, yes. you're, you're, uh, you're gonna be a loser, or you da da da, whatever. Like they would say, then it becomes yes. your inner voice. And, yes. and yeah, we need to f release that and forgive that and get that out of our also, life. Get that out of our also life. Also makes you the the exercise also makes me think a lot. As a father myself now, what are the, the, the things that my son will have to forgive me for? Right. And, and there will be things, I mean, because we're human. We're, you know, even, yeah, that's the thing is people like, they, they say, okay, everything that my parents did, I'm going to make sure I don't do any of that. But then, you know, they overcompensate somewhere else or something, and it's like, okay, but... You know, there's no instruction manual. We don't know. We don't know. You know, it's hard to know. And then we, you know, we react. We we all have good days and bad days, and we react out of our emotions sometimes. And and sure. and we don't know. We can't read their minds either. They're humans. You know, we we can't read their minds. We don't know their motives or their or their needs. So it's right. it's tough. It's tough. So we yeah, we got to depend on. Depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit, and and just be thankful that there's grace. Thankful that there's grace for, and we you know we want to give the grace to others that God showed us. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll uh, close the night. Let's see. You want you want to you want to pray out, or you want me to pray out? Father, thank you very much for, for tonight. Thank you for allowing us to see the importance of forgiveness and even more specifically of uh, forgiving our, our parents. Don't let us judge, Father, our parents. Let us understand and forgive and especially remember that we ourselves are not perfect and that we too make mistakes and that humans that we all are we need to to forgive each other and this is possible only with your grace and with the guidance of your holy spirit thank you father for tonight and let us please keep reflecting on this very important aspect of our lives and let us come back in a couple of weeks to continue to continue learning thank you for brother michael for all the time that he invests in the lessons keep blessing him father and let him know that his work is uh, will yield its fruits at, at the proper time thank you father in the name of jesus christ amen